this is a really good story. Um, as a pro audio sales guy, a lot of the celebrity clients that you deal with, they're under the illusion that you're mesmerized with their presence and you just want to hang around them and just uh, glow in their glory. And that's not me. I'm interested in getting in there, getting the job done. They tell me what they want, make it all happen, and then go home. And uh, this is uh, one of those kind of deals. Um, John Bon Jovi is is a good client of mine, and uh, I, I supply them all their gear uh, through Obi O'Brien. I've met John. He's a very, very nice guy. But um, <clears throat> one day, I get a call. Their Pro Tools system is not working, and they needed me to come out. And they're about 80 miles away from where I live. So I said, all right. You know, I, I jumped in the car, drove out there. And he lives on this big piece of uh, uh, real estate, big, huge house. And then he has this big uh, carriage house that the studio is in. Well, it wasn't. It's not there anymore. But that's that's where the studio was. And usually you go in there. It's quiet. Nobody's there. But, uh, you know, OB and maybe a, a band member or something. So it's it's very, very quiet. So I get there. And I knew something was up because when I got there, there was a lot of people there. And I didn't know what was going on. And I saw people walking around with, you know, big industrial cameras or videotaping and that. And everybody's like, is this the guy? Is this the guy? And they're pointing to me. And uh, and uh, they're, they're like going, yeah, yeah, this is the guy. Yeah, he, he can make it all work. And so I walk up. You have to walk up the stairs. It's on the top floor of the carriage house. I go in, I go straight to the Pro Tools, and I go, what's wrong? And I said, it just doesn't work. And uh, so I think I was talking to the director, and there was all these people there. And this guy's sitting next to me, and he's giving me a hard time. He says, look, would it take him an hour to pick out his T-shirt? We couldn't get anybody from the city. We had to wait for somebody from PA. And I said, listen, buddy, I'll get your thing up and running before you come up with the next insult. So, you know, I went in there, I saw their... Their uh, preferences were corrupted, and this was way before they had these programs that easily, you know, weeded that stuff out. So you had to know where to look for to to, to clear that out, and then restart it, and make sure everything was all configured properly. So I did that. It took me all of maybe five minutes, and then they were up and running. And I said, "Okay, you guys are up and running," and and I'm I'm getting up to to leave. And then the guy next to me is like. Hey, you don't want to hang out? You know, tell me about yourself. You know, what do you do? And I, I go, you know, listen, I, I'm not interested. I, I got work to do. I, I'll, I'll see you later. And, uh, and he was just like flabbergasted that I didn't want to hang out with him. Well, I found out later the guy standing next was sitting next to me was uh, Southside Johnny, and this was all a recording for him and a video and all, and it was all based around him. But I was like, I could care less, you know, uh, about that kind of celebrity stuff. Just got in there, did my job, got out there. Again, didn't get paid for that. I just made sure, you know, as as people are my clients, I take care of them. And uh, part of the deal is if I take care of you, you know, just keep buying gear from me. Uh, but that's that was a, an interesting, interesting thing because people consider him a legend. And I just like, he wasn't a legend that day. To, I mean, not to me. I, Seems to seem like an okay guy, but I maybe not an okay guy. Didn't have to give me a hard time, and he could have just been a little nicer to me. So, uh, but didn't bother me. Got the the job done. They were up and running, and they were happy. <laughs>